Broadcom just published a report that's sending shockwaves across the industry. They're calling it the Great Cloud Reset. And the findings are pretty shocking. According to their research, 69% of enterprises are now considering moving their workloads back from public cloud to private cloud. 94% of organizations believe that they are wasting money on public cloud spend. And 53% say that private cloud is now their top priority for the next three years. If these numbers are accurate, this would represent the biggest reversal in enterprise technology strategy in decades. A rejection of the cloud revolution that created trillion dollar companies like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. But here is where things get interesting. While this report is telling us that enterprises want to abandon public cloud, the actual financial data tells a completely different story. AWS, Azure, and GCP are all hitting record revenue numbers year after year. These companies aren't in decline. They are printing money faster than ever before. So what's really going on here? Is the great cloud reset actually happening or is there something else behind this story? I'm Suleiman. I've been in tech for over a decade. I run my own businesses in consulting, software and education. And through my education academy, I've helped more than 500 people learn cloud and AI. Before we dive into what's really happening, I need to make sure that we are all on the same page regarding the different cloud models. Public cloud refers to renting on-demand computing power over the internet from companies like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. Private cloud is different. You get the benefits of cloud computing, but the infrastructure is dedicated exclusively to your organization. It might be in your own building or hosted somewhere else, but it's yours alone. Then there is the traditional on-prem model where you own and manage all the physical servers yourself in your own data center. There are some legitimate reasons why some companies might prefer private cloud over public cloud. If you're handling sensitive financial data or specific compliance requirements, you might want to add some extra control. But with this report, Broadcom is claiming that there is a great cloud reset on the horizon, a shift where the majority of companies are rejecting public cloud entirely. And that's where I think this story starts to fall apart. Because when you dig deeper, a very different picture emerges. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. In November 2023, Broadcom bought VMware for $61 billion, one of the biggest tech acquisitions ever. VMware dominates the virtualization technology market. This is the software that powers most private cloud and on-premise infrastructure that companies run on today. Right after the acquisition, Broadcom completely overhauled VMware's licensing model. Companies that had been customers for years suddenly faced a price increase of three times to 20 times overnight. Now, here is why this matters. According to the report, they surveyed 1,800 IT decision makers with 64% from large enterprises with over 5,000 employees. Most of these enterprises don't run everything in one place. They typically have hybrid setups with some workloads on VMware-based private cloud and others on public cloud like AWS or Azure. When Broadcom hit them with massive price increases, these companies faced with a dilemma to pay the new cost or move operations to public cloud to escape VMware entirely or switch to a different private cloud provider. So to get this straight, Broadcom jacks up their customers' infrastructure costs, throws them into crisis mode, and then surveys the same panic organizations asking them, are you considering moving workloads back from public cloud to private cloud? Obviously, they are right now because you are partly responsible for the crisis that forced them to consider it. It's like doubling someone's rent and then surveying them about whether they're considering to buy a house. And this serves Broadcom in a couple of ways. Firstly, it deflects the blame. They can't say, hey, we're not price increasing. Everyone's moving away from public cloud anyway. Secondly, it justifies the pricing hikes by pointing to the service their results. See, you know, private cloud is in high demand, so our prices are market driven. Now here is the brilliant part. It doesn't matter if these companies end up using VMware or any alternative private cloud technologies. Any narrative suggesting that private cloud is preferable to public cloud feeds the great cloud reset narrative. But even if we set aside Broadcom obvious motivations, let's examine whether their claims actually hold up against actual market reality. The numbers show a completely different reality. AWS posted just under $31 billion 
dollars in revenue last quarter, grown 18% year over year. Microsoft Azure grew 39% annually. Azure is now Microsoft's biggest growth driver. Google Cloud grew at 32% with new records in profits. If the report is to believed and 69% of enterprises are truly considering fleeing from public cloud, how do you explain these numbers? There's clearly a massive disconnect between what this report claims and where companies are actually spending their money. And you might be thinking, well, what about all of those cloud exit stories that we keep hearing about? Surely some companies are successfully moving back on-prem. There's a few, like 37 Signals, Moving Basecamp, and Hay of AWS. They've projected saving $10 million over five years. Then there's Dropbox, which moved 90% of their customer data of AWS back in 2016, reportedly saving $75 million. Jico started migrating back to on-prem after their cloud spend hit over $300 million per year. It sounds like compelling evidence, right? But here is what the narrative doesn't tell you. While 86% of CIOs plan to move some workloads off public cloud, only 8% of companies actually reported moving all their workloads back to on-prem. Most are doing very selective repatriation, moving specific applications that make sense while keeping the majority of their infrastructure in the cloud. But the bigger issue is these success stories are incredibly specific cases that don't apply to most organizations. Basecamp is a productivity tool and their applications have predictable usage patterns. The same goes to Dropbox because they are storing massive amounts of relatively static data, exactly the kind of workload that benefits from owning your own hardware. And Dropbox still uses AWS for compute, analytics, and many other services. Plus, we're not even considering all of the dozens of failed repatriation attempts that we don't even hear about. And there's even a bigger problem with repatriation beyond just cost considerations. Because with private cloud or on-prem, you're choosing to be six to 18 months behind on every new capability that gets released. And with AI and how fast technology is changing in today's market, that delay can be make or break for your business. You're essentially saying no to innovation. And when you look where the real value is being built, the gap is widening every single year. Every unicorn startup over the last decade, Uber, Airbnb, Stripe, Spotify, was built cloud first from day one. These companies didn't debate private versus public cloud. They used cloud infrastructure as their foundation and focus on building incredible user experiences and creating value. And now we're seeing the next generation of unicorns emerge. And they're even more dependent on cloud infrastructure. The new wave of AI-powered companies like OpenAI, Cursor, Claude, and all thousands of AI startups are building cloud-enabled platforms where cloud serves as the foundation and AI provides the intelligence layer. Now, none of this innovation can be replicated on-premise. The rate of innovation at the hyperscalers is unprecedented. Big tech is investing $320 billion alone this year into AI and cloud infrastructure. If you're on private cloud or fully on-prem, you're not just missing out on these innovations, you're actively choosing to fall behind your competition. Now, while the innovation gap alone should give any CTO a pause, there's one more thing that we need to address. The belief that on-prem is inherently more secure. Just because you have more control over your infrastructure doesn't actually make it more secure. Quite frankly, it's absurd. Companies ignore the shared responsibility model when it comes to using public cloud services. Cloud providers like AWS handle the security of the cloud, the physical infrastructure, but you are still responsible for security in the cloud. Your data, your applications, your identity, your configurations. The reality is that companies are leveraging cloud only worry about security after that they have been breached instead of implementing it from the ground up. That's why most data breaches happen due to human error, not because of the underlying infrastructure platform. We're talking about things like misconfigured bucket policies, leaving default passwords unchanged, not enabling two-factor authentication, or even accidentally making private files publicly accessible. Sounds careless, doesn't it? But it's happening. Just look at McDonald's. They recently deployed an AI chatbot for job applications, and security researchers found that they could access personal information of over 64 million applicants by simply using 123456 as a password and changing a number in the website's code. This perfectly illustrates what's actually happening right now. Companies are rushing to deploy AI features and applications to stay competitive, but they're moving so fast that they're overlooking basic security principles. And the numbers back this up. 61% of organizations experienced cloud-related security incidents in 2024. That's up from just 24% the previous year. And the causes are almost always easily avoidable mistakes. These aren't 
problems that get solved by moving to private cloud. They are human errors and misconfigurations that happen regardless of where your infrastructure is hosted. So, is the great cloud reset actually happening? Is there really a mass exit from public cloud back to private cloud and on-prem? No, there isn't. A small percentage of companies are making strategic decisions to move specific workloads back to on-prem. And it's not a cloud exit. They're just running a hybrid cloud strategy. But what's really important to understand is that the AI revolution is being built entirely on cloud infrastructure. The next generation of unicorns will be using AI-powered cloud Cloud enabled. And when you look at where venture capital is flowing, where the IPOs are happening, it's in those companies. The present and the future is cloud. And if you're positioning your career or your business strategy around that reality, then you're simply making the right bet.